Hey everybody, this is Papa Pickaxe, and I just wanted to apologize briefly for the audio in this video. I was recording and I tested everything and everything had sound and volume like it should have. And it wasn't until I started editing that I realized that the audio for my voice was coming from my webcam microphone and not my actual recording mic. So the audio, my voiceover audio in this video is going to be a uh, very poor quality. So I'm really sorry about that and hopefully I will have it fixed next time, but this video is just going to be a little off. So bear with me and I hope you enjoy it anyway. I hope it doesn't detract too much. I really hate that it happened on this video because I'm talking so much and this is a very story driven game. Uh, so that's unfortunate, but hopefully it'll be rectified going forward. And I hope you enjoy the video all the same. But thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey, everybody. I also wanted to apologize for the face cam video. I don't know what was going on with the lighting, but it is super distracting. It gets bright and dark, and I don't know. This, I don't know really what happened. But hopefully I'll figure out how to rectify that situation as well. But I just felt like I needed to mention that. Um, in case it is your first time watching a video or something that is not normal for my content and I'm going to try and fix it. But this video was too good to let go. I couldn't just get rid of it. So we're just gonna have to deal with it, but thank you guys. Hey everybody, this is Papa Pickaxe and welcome to Firewatch. I picked this game up a while back and I just uh, got done recording subsurface circular and i was like i can go to bed because it's pretty late or i could just play something else and this icon the uh the shortcut on my desktop for firewatch just caught my eye and was like just play some fucking firewatch now now is the time so we're gonna do an episode of firewatch right now uh i have no idea about this game I know it's very story driven and I know it's very pretty. I don't know what's going on. So let's just jump in, see what we got. Uh, let's go on game one. Mm -hmm. Loading. I was like, uh, and we are stuck. Not stuck, just loading. Oh yeah. Boulder, Colorado, 1975. 1975. You see Julia. Oh. She's about your age, late twenties, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from near YCU Boulder. You are Henry, or you, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. So what's your, you know, major? You, you're pretty. That's more like what I would say. You're pretty. She says coolly. You are not. You are a future hangover. What? You reply confused. Someone should buy you a cheeseburger, she says. She flags down a waiter, and one week later, you were Julia's boyfriend. If only it worked like that in real life. Fucking A. Oh. Pick up my backpack? I like how that is a down arrow. It's a little skippy. Maybe I should turn the graphics down. Okay, sorry, I had to adjust the graphics settings a little bit to make it a little less wobbly. I'm guessing that's my truck, but I kind of want to look around. Whoa. A little skipping, that's okay.
All right, let's get in the truck. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about every, anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. Oh man, she loves it and wants to bring it to class. Gentle-eyed German German Shepherd. Let's do what the girl wants. Ah, I want her to be protected. And she wants a dog. She's in love with a beagle. Let's make Julia happy. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. This is nice. 1979. You talk out on the deck. It's summer, 9.30 p.m., and the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids, she asks. Kids? They're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some. A couple little idiots. One day, why rush? She looks away, out towards the mountains. We still have plenty of time, right? Speak for yourself, mister. Uh, that's a tough call. I just have to answer the way I feel. Don't worry, you're sure. You tell her she has the body of an undergrad. My ovaries didn't get the memo, she says laughing it off. One day, okay? Okay, one day, she said. Six months later, you get engaged lying in bed on a Sunday morning. I like this story already. So I get my backpack out of the truck. Am I wearing my backpack? Wow. I had to turn down the graphics since I'm recording. But this is still pretty pretty. Don't forget to check in. You're in their country. Learn to live with bears. No fireworks. Thoroughfare trail is not recommended for inexperienced hikers. Can't read that. Can't read that. Is there a you are here thing? Supply drop, bear tooth point, mule point. Okay. Thunder Cannon, Two Forks Lookout, I'm guessing is where I am. All right. Let's just go up the trail. Hmm. 1980. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. What would I do? What would I do in this situation? She's late getting home. She's been out drinking. I would probably ignore her, but you can't ignore her. That just shows her that you don't care. You get mad. You call her an inconsiderate asshole. She tells you to fuck yourself and to not be such a baby. You call her selfish. She knows you mean it and it hurts her feelings. 
I think that was going to hurt her feelings no matter what. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You pose and flex like He-Man. You frog like a Victoria's Secret model. He-Man. You look awesome. I would probably do both in consecutive order. Whoa, game. Whoa. Chillax. I really like this so far. I really like this. Two Forks Fire Lookout. Eight more miles still. Oh. 1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Bucket gets kicked. B B B fuck the dog. What? Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. Beat him in his goddamn face. Your arm gets cut up, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. You cry your eyes out before the cops show up. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say, okay, you don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. 1984. Oh, no. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Oh, no. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job, associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Fuck, man, this is tough. Fuck. Convince her not to take the job. You can't convince her not to take the job. It's a great job. She wants it. Fuck. Agree if she commutes back and forth. That's not fair either. That's not fair to her either. That's a lot of strain. But that's better than convincing her not to take a job. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if that's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. This is going to end badly. 1985. Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. What? She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. You make macaroni and drink wine and try to forget about it. Um, wow. Uh, I would say you make macaroni, drink wine, and then talk to someone about it, but that's not an option. So you gotta, you gotta talk about it. Oh no. Oh no. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She is 41. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. What the fuck is this game, man? Oh my gosh. Started out super nice, but super fucking depressing. Pick up my journal. King Beef. Oh, dude, I do look awesome. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to university. 
Oh, not the dog now. What the fuck, man? 1987. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in her cla in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julie who calls you a dope and your unborn child little idiot, children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you in to make she pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family. They are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. Nineteen eighty-eight. You spend your f days following Julie around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. Oh, fuck, man. This is deep shit. You decide to move her into a full-time care facility. You are determined to take care of her by yourself. I don't know why this is hitting home so much for some reason. Just a stupid fucking... Just a stupid fucking... Dialogue. The choices are so real though. I feel like if you decide to move her into a full-time care facility, you're basically like giving up on her. But if you're determined to take care of her by yourself, it's going to destroy both of you. And she's not going to know who you are, and she's going to say things that hurt you. Determined to take care of her by yourself. Just fucking do it, man. This is fucked, man. Hey, Kiki. Oh. It's a deer. Hello. That was kind of a derpy runaway. Oh, no. It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her, and she can't do anything without you. See, and that's... Like in a good relationship with two healthy people, that's the way it should be. I mean, not to that extent, but... You can't do anything without her, and she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter, drinking then too. Oh, don't drink yourself to death, Henry. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. Oh, fuck. Why do I feel like if I put a chair in front of the bedroom door, the house is going to catch fire and she's going to die in the bedroom? But if I trust that she's going to sleep like a rock, she's going to fucking take the car and crash it and kill herself. I feel like either way, she's going to die in a terrible accident and it's going to be my fault. Although, it does say you start going out after you put her to bed and this is just the first time. I'm going to trust that she sleeps like a rock. This is a bad decision. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. 
Over time, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple of nights a week. You look forward to those nights. 1989. Oh, shit. One night you were stopped at a DUI checkpoint, you blow up point one zero and are taken to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. Then they tell you Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. She's fucking gone anyway. Doesn't even matter. It was just a bunch of heartache for both people. Although she probably didn't even know. Wow. This fuck. What is this game? You take it. You don't even go see her. Wow, the fucking frame rate is just dropping like crazy. Enter the lookout tower. <sighs> oh, frame rate, why? Did you see I'm too fucking emotional for that? Just want to walk around. Thoroughfare Lookout Tower. Any other ones? Oh. What happened to Bucket? Maybe there'll be more story, like the conclusion when I go to bed or something. Hello, Two Forks Tower. Two Forks Tower, this is Thoroughfare Tower. Come in. Oh, I have a voice. Um, hello? Delilah. Whatever this is. It's hey there, Delilah. Yeah. What's it like in Delilah. New York City? Yeah, that's what the okay, sorry. The phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? Wow. Take this job to get away from something. Fuck, Henry. So what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I sleep for Come on, Henry. Sure, buddy. You killed three ex-husbands who are rebelling against mom. You killed three. <laughs> I like that one. Okay, uh, you've killed three husbands. You're a black widow, and you're just out here until the heat dies down, and then you'll kill again. Good job, me. Ooh, very good. Bravo, Henry. Okay, I sleep now? Not quite. <laughs> now you. <laughs> good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you, but nine times out of ten, folks out here simply got dumped. Huh, is that it? Close? Wow. Wow, what the fuck is this? This game. Hang on. Good morning, Henry. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get. 
get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're I ready. I want to pause the game. Hey, fourteen hours? That could that be fucking nice, right about now. Got a relaxing what? Fourteen hours of sleep? Ooh. It's broken. Broken oh, clock. Jesus, I guess it's what six. 645. Whoops. Don't worry about it. That hike I don't want to get acquainted with the job right now. Oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to leave this episode here. Uh, wow. That is fucking ridiculous. Like, that is ridiculous. Like, that almost had me, like, tearing up at some points. Just the dialogue and the story already. I mean, what the hell is that setting this game up for? Like, that was like a 25-minute intro. Was it setting up Henry as a person? Like, as a character going forward? Was it just legitimately just giving backstory on Henry? I just, I don't know. I don't know. But that was, that was super legit right there. Um, but I'm going to leave this episode here. I hope my computer can handle this game. I don't want to go any lower than medium graphic settings and record it because that's just not going to be good for anybody. And I don't want it to get below 30 frames too often because that's not going to be good for anybody. So hopefully I can stick it out and hopefully this computer will start kicking in high gear and I don't burn my graphics card out. But this is a... Uh, I'm glad I started this now because I should have played this a while back, it seems like. So I'm going to leave this episode here. I hope you guys are as intrigued as I am. And I uh, hope you guys are as excited to see what's going to happen going forward. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you next time. Bye.